Welcome to Linux in the Shell, episode 10, the DF command. My name is Dan, and I'll be your host tonight. As a reminder, if you have not already visited the website or listened to the audio portion of the show, please do so at your earliest convenience. This is just merely showing you examples of using a DF command, not the full write-up. And I'd also like to thank Hacker Public Radio for their support. DF command. DF reports file system disk space usage, and there's a bunch of options here which we're going to get into. So by default, if I run the DF command, it reports back file system usage on the various file systems that I have, my partitions, in uh, kilobit blocks, kilobyte blocks. Now those are 1,024-bit uh, kilobyte blocks, and the first column shows how much space is actually total, how much space in the file system I have, how much is used, followed by how much is available, a percentage of how much is used, and where it's mounted on. Very handy information. So first column is the actual file system or device or partition that you see there. So you see like root FS, uh, uh, it actually it might be helpful if I show you a quick option right now. If you pass the capital T, to that, you will tell you the uh, type of file system it is. So rootfs is the rootfs file system, slash dev is dev tempfs, run is uh, tempfs, then we have two ext4 partitions here, and then two fuse sshfs partitions going to a uh, remote servers and stuff from remote shares. By default, it's showing these in 1k blocks. You can change that by passing the dash capital B for block and then the letter for the block type. M for megabyte, G for gigabyte, T for terabyte. Now notice the odd behavior right here that it actually says I have one terabyte of space, but you can see I only actually have 58 gigabytes of space here on this this partition, but it's showing one terabyte. It's a quirky way that it displays that. It actually has a value in there, so it can't show you zero because there's something in there, but then again, it doesn't even come close to having a terabyte of space. So it, it gets quirky. Now, if you try and do that with um, like zettabytes, it throws an error that the zettabyte's too large. You know, when you think about it, maybe you should have thrown an error for the terabytes, but that's the way it behaves. So just be aware of that. Now, one of the options you can do is instead of capital B M for megabyte, you could do just dash M will show you a megabyte. You can do that, I think, for K too, but those are the only two that I can do that with on this version of DF, and uh, probably most versions of DF. Another option I can use, like free command on newer versions of DF, is to do a human readable format. So if I do DH dash H, it shows it in a very accessible format that once it uh, the file system start exceeds three digits, it goes on to the next higher value. So it makes it easy to get a, a, a quick picture of how much space you're actually using on your file systems. Now I showed you before that if I did the DF dash capital T and if I want to do H in there uh, for human readable, it shows you the type of file system that it is. Now you can just look at the information for a specific file system by the lowercase t and then the type of file system you want it to be. So I can do capital T dash H in there and, and see that it shows the type human readable and I've only seen the ext4. I could do the same thing also with the SSH uh, or it's actually fuse.sshfs I think it is and there you go. So you can see that nice handy information right there. Let's clear that screen and you can uh, you can use an option, the X option, which hides that specific file system or omits it. So now again you see that there's no ext4 file systems available. There's an option here to show more than just what's displayed, but it will also show you the dummy file systems. As you notice, if I did just df H before. You see that there's a few other f file systems thrown in here, like proc is something, uh, bin uh, FMT is in there. So they're just dummy file systems, what they call dummy file systems. They, they actually have points, and you can view the read up 
and, and understand what a little better some of those are. But that's the dash A option right there. Um, there is an option for dash L that's called just local. And you'll notice that when I run that, it only shows me the local file systems, nothing that's mounted remotely. And you can see that you no longer see those SSHFS file systems on there. You can't see them. There's an option to display the values in blocks of a thousand and thousand byte blocks instead of 1024. That's a dash H or dash SI, which will do the same thing, uh, and it'll display it using thousand byte blocks. Now you can use DF to display inode information. And this tells me that I have available on my file systems here on my root file systems 3.6 megabytes for inodes, and I've used 361k, and I have free 3.3 megabytes of I, uh, space for inodes on there. Inodes, uh, as the write-up says, stores information about a file that's not the file name or the data associated with the file, but stuff like file permissions and uh, modification times and things like that. So that's what inodes do. And that is essentially the df command in a nutshell. So remember, probably the easiest thing is df-h. If you don't have uh, human readable, you're using an older system, I always find df-m or df-bg if you want to do just gigabytes to show you that information uh, very simply and very quickly. So that's it for this episode of Linux in a Shell. Thank you for listening, and we hope to see you again in two weeks. Bye.